What's up guys? It's December 13th, 2023. It was FOMC today and there was some news prior to that, which is these huge bars you see. We had a really tight range. My voice is starting to go out, excuse me. We had a really tight range. Um, yeah, it's kind of how it goes pre-FOMC. Not too much to trade. I got stopped out for like one point. And yeah, so let's just get into it. It was an FOMC day. <laughs> huge bull trend. We've been just trending higher and higher. Pretty much buy and hold and you will eventually make money. Yesterday we had a pull, small pullback bull trend. We closed at highs. We've been closing at highs. If you look at the past three days, I mean here technically we didn't close at new highs, but we closed at the upper half of the range. Prior to that, or after that, December 11th, we did close at highs. December 12th, we closed at highs. And today we closed at highs. Let's get into it. Yeah, so bar one is a good bull bar. The market tried to sell off and eventually reversed up. This can be seen as a breakout bar. However, we need to wait for bar two and see follow through. Bar twos, three, four, and five are bad follow through for the bulls, and there it's a tight bull bear channel. Here's a tight bear channel. Eventually, they break out and create a new high. This was a really man. My voice is gone. This was a really weak bull trend because the pullbacks are deep. So I would say here's leg one, leg two, and then within that we have a fractal leg one, leg two, which actually was not, oh wait, let me do body to body. Yeah, it was meant if you do body to body, kind of very slow. That was, that was almost the first hour of the day, and then the rest of the day we sold off into FOMC. You can see within this bear trend, yes, we it's a tight bear channel and we are trending lower, but there is a lot of wicks to the upside. If we were to get short, I would definitely be cautious because of all these. These are follow through for the bears. It's a minimum follow through for the bears. It's not a bull body. None of these range bars have bull bodies, so that's the minimum follow through. However, it is just not what you want to see in a downtrend. You have to start thinking maybe something's not right. As we start to make a new low of the day, the market starts to turn around and we reclaim yesterday's high. That's that burgundy line here. I changed my levels to burgundy just because I was getting tired of looking at the bright red. Nothing special to it. And then FOMC, ooh, what is going, what is, <laughs> let me delete that. If we look at this, a few videos ago, I talked about how all bear channels break out into have bullish breakouts and all bull channels have eventually have a bearish breakout. Here we can see a bull flag with a deep pullback that actually went past the 100% mark. And what I mean by that is this low would be the 100% for the pullback. So yeah, so this would be the push up and then with a pullback we want to see like a 33% and go maybe 50%. However, this went this is what I meant. This went past the 100% pullback and then we went still a bull flag if it wasn't for FOMC and the news kind of fueling this move I wouldn't have expected a new high after a pullback that goes past 100% mark because we are well the bears really didn't get a strong close under the under bar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 under bar 8 the bears did not get a strong close they tried to close multiple times but ultimately failed FOMC happened. There was like press conferences and Powell speaking at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I sat out almost everything. I would just, today was, I was, I have a, I am, no, my PNL does not like FOMC days. I just don't trade it correctly. This is a mean reversion market. So buy low, sell high. Something I don't really like to do. Sometimes I have something I have a hard time doing. Not that I don't like. For instance, I was not able to sell this. Sell. I sold this for a breakout, and then it just was bad. Really bad follow through. It did get a new low. In terms of this breakout, we didn't get a new all day. A new overall low, but I could have made a few points on that trade, but it just wasn't worth it. I hit out. FOMC. Start of the news conference is a huge. Bull bar. I'm gonna draw this line here for context. Just make it a different color. There's not too many colors I like. Okay, pink. So huge bar. We have to be thinking that when this bar gets put in, is this a vacuum test 
of support or is this in the case of be resistance? Is this a vacuum t test of resistance or is this a strong breakout? I was very skeptical because we have just been trending and trending and trending <laughs> since October 30th. It's just been bull trend. And the reason I was skeptical is because this is the cleanest looking bar late in a bull trend. It's it's the biggest and it's the cleanest and that is signs for exhaustion. However, I waited till bar to the second bar after this to see if it was a break a vacuum test and it had follow through. I still wasn't trading because I just didn't want to trade during the news. These bars were huge. The market was volatile. I do like volatility, but this is this is a lot, 60 points. And I was trading the E-mini, so I was like, uh, my stop would have to be down here, and that's a stop down there with an entry here. That's a 30-point stop with the E-mini. It's recommended that we shave off, what was the exact number? So if you would trade one E-mini, you would trade two micros. I can't remember the, I think it's 20%. If you're trading news or huge bars, it's better to trade 20% of your actual size. So 10 contracts, 10 micro contracts equal one mini, 20% of 10, excuse me, yeah, 20% of 100, wait, what am I trying to say? It's two two micros if you <laughs> swap to the, if you're trading the E-mini, it's two micros is the ratio Al Brooks recommends. Oh man, I'm bad at math. <laughs> so here we get the leg one, leg two, very nice, clean move, strong continuation, first pullback fails. Uh, I originally was looking like right here and you can see that it misses it by a tick however if we wait for the next candle to have its pullback it does get hit right here something that's becoming more apparent to me that I'm looking for these leg one leg two moves it is just always safer to put the pullback where it's supposed to be prior to like when I was just trying to learn leg one leg two moves I would always put the pullback here and now I'm viewing that as a little more greedy because if if it's a leg one, leg two, the leg starts when the pullback starts. Not because I want, if, if I put it here and it hits, that's great, but respecting the market and the way and respecting the price action, this is where the pullback starts. So that is where the leg two starts. And look, if you respect it, you would have got filled. Strong breakout above the first flag. I'm looking at this as the first flag type bull channel very tight bull channel. We have a tight bull channel here that breaks out. We over, we over, I'm trying to get better at reading channels so you guys are gonna start seeing me draw them a lot more because they're really important to understand. Along with gaps, but I am studying gaps because gaps are kind of tricky. So we all understand the main gaps, like here's a bull gap, here's bull, bullish gaps that eventually get closed. So this would be a gap open. And I understand it from that perspective. However, how do I say this? This is a gap too. This is a micro gap from here to here. I'm gonna make it a little more lighter. 15, you see? See, this is a gap. Um, Here to here is a bear gap. So I'm trying to learn it from a, I guess this would be more fractal. Each bar, every three bars you can put in a micro gap. So that's what I'm trying to do. Here to here is a micro gap for the bull side. It's the high of this, the high of the third bar and that bar. So, so we could say, so here's a small gap. So here's no gap. This gap is non-existent. So that's interesting. Now we're just talking, talking out loud. Gaps are staying open as the market's trending as the gaps get closed. Look, here's a smaller gap. As the gaps get closed, the market starts to reverse. The slope of this line is very steep. Gosh, why does that? Oh yeah, okay, I see what I'm doing. This is, the, it's supposed to do that. Slope of the line is very steep with no touching the EMA. Although I would say it's better not to touch the EMA with this fast of a move up. It was almost 60 points. I think it was 60, we measured out 60 points from the bottom here to the top here. 65 points from close to close. I think it's natural for the market to want to pull back. Admittingly, I was on a challenge account because I was not messing around. I bought the high here, I bought more here, and I got up on this bar and I made a little bit of money. This was a really crappy pullback, but I was certain the market was either gonna make a new high or go range bound. And in this case, the market went range bound with this being the low, the EMA was the low. 
and overall bigger gap that keeps these gaps open right here. And we can start to see just in this little maneuver how gaps are important. And we can start to measure the market strength. I really think I'm um, not saying I'm going to go from not profitable to profitable, but I am going to get that little extra price action reading once I can identify gaps fluently. I had to really think about how to draw these for you guys. And that's not something I want to be doing. It should be like second nature. So yeah, excuse me. Oh man, my voice. Strong breakout with continuation. I don't know what to say. The bulls are just going to go to the moon. I think I see, I seen someone's video. Dow made a new high. I don't trade the Dow, but if they made a new high, we are quite close to highs too. Um, yeah, we are... 25 plus 8, 33 points away from all time highs. I'm going to delete these and I'm just going to re update them after this week. The contract rollover just confused the hell out of me when it came to these numbers, but everything should be the same. We're trading at 4070. The market closed at 7060. The market closed around, yeah, 7060. So all the charts are the same. My, these charts are lining up with my Ninja Trader charts again. So it's two more days to the week's over and then I'll go back to adding the weekly 50% levels because I actually do like having those on the five minute chart. Yeah, I don't trade them, but they really help with the context of what the market's doing. Market's in its third leg up. We, I've been showing these legs quite frequently, leg one, leg two, deep pullback, gap, and leg three. I've been trained to think that leg threes, no, I've not been trained to think. I've been trained that leg threes are not good to trade. However, we can't just not trade because the overall daily chart is like three or price action where we trade on lower time frames. So it's good. I think it's just good to keep in mind like, hey, we are on a higher time frame, leg three. Leg three is not confirmed until we get a pullback, however. So this can keep going up until the pullback. This is this is today. This is the after hours. Is the market still going higher? I'm tired of talking about pullbacks. Yeah, wow. Okay, so the market's still going higher. Very tight bull channel no short it, and if you want to get long you kind of just have to buy and hold or wait for the pullback should get a pullback soon i don't even know why i'm saying that i've been saying that for a while now it is starting to look parabolic just from the simple fact like these are out of all the bull out of these last few months can we like did we see any bars that look like this do we see a 60 point move in two hours that's an exhaustion that's a super nice bar happens super fast. However, it's not exhaustion until it's an exhaustion. These are all just speculations. Please don't short the market at open tomorrow unless the price action tells us to get short. Price action is the most optimized form of trading, so there are no need for indicators. If you guys are learning something, hit the follow button, hit subscribe. I drop these videos every day at 3, p 3 p.m. I am a student to Al Brooks. I trade his methods and his methods only. Have a good night, everyone. I will talk to you tomorrow.